Blog Talk Radio. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Hi, everyone. This is Natalie Dunes and Natalie Jean. On Chatting with Nat today, we have singer-songwriter Jennifer Alvarado. Jennifer is from Vail, North Carolina. She's currently working on her album titled Songbird, a two-part collection of songs that shows her growth as a writer and is sonically different than earlier projects. She was named the 2021 Country Artist of the Year by Indie Star Radio, Curious One Best Pop Song for the Indie Songwriting Awards in Winter 2022. She's nominated for five ISSA Awards, a Josie Award for Filthy Water, and a Carolina Music Award for Country Female. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. Hi, Thank Jennifer. You so much. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I made it to see another day, so um, I guess I'm doing okay. I'm still uh, amongst the living, amongst the cray-cray here. Um, so how <laughs> elections, pandemic, Ukraine, monkeypox, um, COVID has some babies, Mass shooting, George Floyd, yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Wade. Um, have you been through all that? Um, I think like everybody else, you have good days and you have bad days. Um, I will say that um, for me, I I've always had anxiety. Like I've I've dealt with anxiety since I was really little. Right. Um, and so I think. Because of that, um, maybe it, it almost felt like when the pandemic first started, it almost felt like everybody else finally understood how I was feeling, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so, in a sense, it was very, it was almost freeing. Um, I hate that, like, everybody else feeling that same anxiety that I've always felt. But in the same regard, I felt like it brought me closer to people, too, in a way. Um, but since then, um, you know, I, I think because of coming out of the pandemic and all of that, um, I did have some times of like depression and, and things like that, but lately, like I've gotten that back under control and, um, I, I don't know. I think everything in life gives you something to be able to share with somebody else. And so for me, it, it was a lot of lessons learned during the pandemic and a lot of um, self-reflection and being able to kind of take everything that's happened in my life and put that into music. That's fantastic. I mean, we all need an outlet. I know that for me, there were points where I became anxious. I became depressed. I ended up getting COVID, the first COVID batch. This was a bad one. Mm. Um, I got yeah. it again. I got it again this past year, um, and I've been okay. boosted, vax, wax, whatever. They have done everything to me. I'm just done with all this. Um, uh, so I completely understand. And, you know, I used to think about all the people that were um, extroverts and having to stay inside, and that must have driven those people absolutely crazy. You know, you don't see anybody except for on the screen and stuff like that. So um, it's just it's interesting. Um, well, for me, I'm very introverted, so I was like, "Okay, we're good, we're good." Yeah, but my husband, is, he, I'm sorry. No, I was laughing. I said, "Yeah." I mean, oh. For people that are introverted, so I was like, "Oh my god, this is great! I can do my thing." Yeah, exactly. Like I got so much stuff done. Um, but my husband's very extroverted. He's a counselor, and so like everything, like he did everything from home. And yeah, I mean, we love each other, and and it was great like being here in the same place, but after a while it was like, Hey, I, I need you to go to your corner and you go, I'll go to mine. <laughs> I completely 
I completely get that because um, I actually live with my mom and my uncle. So, you know, it, it, on one hand, here's here's the great thing. It's like, I'm glad I wasn't living alone because to be alone during that period would have driven me crazy. Um, yeah. So it was great to have uh, my uncle and my mom and us getting crazy in, in the house and stuff like that. Um, so there's just a, I think there's a flurry of different emotions that happen for everybody during that time. Now, one of the questions I like to ask is this, um, obviously there are cons about the pandemic, you know, people died, lost limbs, have long-term, long-term COVID effects and all that stuff. Um, it's just been really tragic and sad. And on the other side, obviously there've been pros and pros, you know, I, I saw people, families walking together, which is not something that should be weird, but I think a lot of people are living in like a fast paced world where they just have to keep going. They just don't take time to breathe. Um, there's some people that realize that they weren't spending enough time with family members and they cut back on work. Um, there are uh, the pollution level went down because the, uh, you know, nobody was out in the streets and the animals and the trees and mother nature were very happy, probably hoping we wouldn't come back, but you know, we had to come back. <laughs> Um, you have people, a lot of articles about people quitting their jobs. So what the pandemic did is made people realize that life is short. Um, and then the pandemic showed them that really life is short, short, short. <laughs> and so they'd rather do something that's more in line with their passion or their destiny. They want to be happy doing what they're, they're right. doing. So a lot of people quit their jobs. And as for artists, a lot of people created singles, EPs, albums. Some decided to rebrand. Some decided, nope, music's not for me anymore. So um, during this time, did you take time for a lot of self-introspection about your career, who you want to be, who you want to be perceived as an artist? What did you think about in those terms? Yeah, so for me during that period, um, I had been, so I have been a worship leader for years, and okay. I had actually been in the church as a worship leader. Um, I had <laughs> beginning of 2020 to go work at a um, nonprofit that helps with ladies experiencing homelessness. And so I was there um, and I had kind of stepped away from worship altogether. And so what happened was I went on furlough um, and finally was able to focus on my music because before I, I sort of, I didn't want to pursue my music and it be um, people think that I was using the church as the platform, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so I had kind of put all my music to the background and just said, you know, whatever, it's, you know, it's on a shelf. And so it really allowed me to look at it again and say, you know, I've got all of these songs. I've got these country songs. I've got these pop songs. What am I doing? And for me, it, it really made me go back and look at, you know, my dreams, my aspirations, like what I wanted to do in life and what I was doing. Right. And so actually at the end of uh, 2020, well, 2020 and then going into the summer of 2021, I left that job and mm. went into full-time music. Um, and, you know, I still volunteer there. I still very much have a a heart and a passion for right. recovery ministry and, and, and that group of people. Um, but I knew that I wasn't giving myself the same care that okay. I was giving everybody else. Because for me, it's very easy to put everybody else at the forefront and I'll just, I'll just settle. I'll just do whatever I need to do to, you know, survive. And um, because I like, I think that internal people pleaser of me, um, mm -hmm. I had let that take control. So it really, the pandemic and just stopping, I think it was just the stopping because I go, go, go. And so right. actually stopping and thinking like, are you happy? Are you like, what are you doing um, with all of this? And are you going to regret something later in life? Um, and it's not that I think I would regret it. It's just, it would be that feeling of what if I had just, tried what if I had just put myself out there and stopped being afraid of what everybody else thinks right right and it's interesting that you say that because 
I was always like that as a kid. Like I always put everybody before me and, and, and into adulthood. Um, and then I had to realize, no, I had to love myself first. I had to do things for myself because I'm important as well. Um, and it's, it's good to, it's nice to do things for other people, but if we're not good ourselves, how can we be good for other people? You know, we need to right. demonstrate that we have a love for ourselves. You know, it's, it's interesting because last, uh, last year I released, and this year I released a song called Authentically Me. And it's all about, you oh. know, being being in a crowd and trying to resemble everybody. And then I had to push myself out of the crowd and I threw my mask on the floor. And now I know who mm. I am. Authentically me, you know, I'm free to do. And the song talks about, you know, looking at myself naked in the mirror and, and not looking for perfection. So, you know, and I think that authenticity is a big deal right now in our world. It has been for the past couple of years because people want something that's real. You know, in the past couple of years, we had fake news, this, that, and the other, and the, people just want to gravitate to hope, something that's yes. real, that they can relate to, that they can bond to, that they can say, my gosh, this artist, I understand her music. She understands me. I'm going to listen to her all of my life or whatever the case may be. Uh, but yeah, right. I think authenticity is, is very important. Now, um, how did you get into the music industry? Did you come out of the womb and say music <laughs> and Jennifer have to be together? Was it something you saw, heard? What was it about the music industry that that, that made you want to become one with it? I think I've always gravitated toward music. Um, I remember reading my grandmother's journals, and even before I could speak, I would be humming and and singing little lines and that kind of thing. So. I think I've always just had this music that is in me. Um, it's always felt like home to me. It's always been sort of that that self-soothing kind of thing. Um, but I remember when I was probably about four, I started making up little songs. And then also I finally realized, like, you know, Whitney Houston and some of these other artists, that that's what they did. They sang for a living. And it was, for me, that was just the coolest idea that you could go out and you could sing songs and, and do music all day long. And so um, it's been very, for me, I'm very analytical. Um, I've always been analytical. My parents are very practical people. Um, and so music was kind of like, okay, you can do this as a hobby, but this is not, like, you can't do this as a job. And right. so I think for so long, that's sort of where my mind was too. And I was always that kid that was like, well, why can't I? Like I knew the analytical side and, and you know, but I, I was sort of like, but why can't I? Like, why can't I be different? Why can't I do this? Um, and so I was always asking the questions. Um, so as far as the music industry, I think I've just always grown to it. I think. Um, especially country music. I grew up with grandparents that played instruments. My grandfather played, um, and he taught me, you know, how to play mandolin and how to play some chords on guitar. And so I've just always been surrounded by music. Um, and so it was just, it became how I expressed myself. It became how I processed things because I'm an only child. And so so much of my life, like, you know, I was around adults and I needed to figure out how to sort of express myself. And I found that through writing. Mm. See, that's the same thing that I did. I started out by writing spiritual poetry because I'm also an interfaith minister. A lot of people don't know that, but um, okay. and that, yeah, and that's how I got into the music industry. Cause my, well, my father is a singer, but he was, one day they were just like, well, why don't you turn this uh, poetry into songs? And that's what I did. That's how I started out with my demo. And um, because I, I can totally understand. I used to let everything out in my songwriting. So yeah, I get you. I completely get you. Um, <laughs> and back on the authentic space, how important is it for you to be authentic in your music, in your songwriting, in your life? I think that's all I want to be. Um, I've had several people say, like, you tell too much. Or not that you tell too much, but just, like, 
you make yourself very vulnerable and you share things that other people wouldn't share. And, and I think for me, that's how I see, that's how I see you actually helping somebody else. Um, If you put on a fake face and you're just like, Oh, everything's great. And you tell, like, you can do that sometimes with, with a made up story, but I think people know when, honestly, when you're full of crap, and I think people know when it's not coming from the heart. And so I've always wanted things to come from the heart because I, I knew what I got out of songs when I was younger. Um, so many songs I would listen to would say something that just hit me. And I felt like I had a friend in it. And I think that that's my biggest thing is I've always wanted to be a friend to somebody who feels like they have nobody. Um, right. And I don't think that you can be a true friend if you're not speaking some some semblance of truth and telling people about, you know, maybe something that you've gone through and how you came out of it. Like, that's where people get encouragement and power. And I think that that's what we're supposed to be doing, especially as, you know, musicians, and is, is to speak our truth in hopes that that right. testimony and that message will help somebody else. Exactly. Um, because one of the things that I um, always say is that with my music over time, and I've thought about this even before the pandemic, that I wanted my music mm-hmm. to make a difference. I want to be an effective player. Yeah. I just don't create music just to create music. It has to be impactful. I want people to say, oh, yeah, she tried to do this or she did this. And, oh, I want people listen to my music. I want them to say, my gosh, um, oh, she, she gets me and that I'm relatable. Right them and stuff like that so um so i completely understand that um so what would you say so do you primarily do country i would say most of my stuff leans toward country um my very first album was contemporary christian and so i still and i've worked on several worship projects so there is that element um i still write christian songs um And actually, I I plan at some point to go back and and probably do another Christian album or EP um, because I have songs that are sitting here. Um, But, yeah, I lean toward country. Country feels like home to me. Now, I will say that I probably, because I did grow up listening to classic rock and pop and top 40 and all that kind of stuff, I have those elements. Um, And so some of my songs definitely lately probably have more of that pop flair to them. Um, even with Rock of Sway has, has almost that rock element to it. Um, I'm, I'm that person that like I've listened to so many different genres growing up and everything and so many things affect me that I think it's only natural that it kind of bleeds over into different things. But I think at its core, I will always be country. I, you know, I can't, I can't get past my twang and my accent. Like yeah. it's there. So um, <laughs> I may as well it. work with. And it. you shouldn't get rid of it. It's part of who you are. I mean, right. That's what it is. Um, well, that's phenomenal. Um, and congratulations, congratulations on all your nominations. Have you um have you ever been have you ever been to the Josie Music Awards? I have not. <laughs> Are you going to go this year? I'm planning on it. Yes, I'm planning on going. Um, um, actually, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I, I hope I put in to play it, you know, the fest or or something. So I'm hoping I get to do that. But um, yeah, I'm hoping to go up there that weekend, and uh, I'm actually looking to maybe find a couple places to play around town just to sort of get involved in the national scene a little bit. That's awesome. So I've been, I've been, um, every, uh, I've been every year. I've been, uh, this will be my going. I've won every year. So, um, so maybe I'll see you there. Um, yeah, it's it's, an, it's a nice event. Um, you know, they really support independent artists a lot, and you'll have a good time. You'll definitely have a good time mm-hmm. at that. Um, so I'm going to play your song, Curious. Let, tell us, tell okay. me what that's about. 
Okay. Um, so it, it sounds a little weird, but I think everybody has that friend that they've always been friends with. And um, especially as you grow deeper into that relationship, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, you start to see that person differently. And right. you know that they're kind of seeing you differently too, but both of you are kind of terrified to, you know, cross any boundaries because there's no going back once you've crossed them. Um, right. It also can apply to the fact of like maybe you're in a relationship. Maybe both of you are in a relationship. Um, so it's just that curiosity of what would it look like if you did, if you did pursue this, like how, how would this go? So. All right, let me play it. I can see you looking at me from across the room. With every single glance, I get a little more confused. You shouldn't want me, I shouldn't want you. All of our reasons, we follow the rules. All I keep dreaming about is me with you. filthy water and the reason is because it it's probably the rawest I wrote that song when I was coming out of a situation um actually with just just a very narcissistically abusive situation 
Mm. And that was my processing song. And I I wrote exactly sort of what I wanted to say. (laughs) Um, For me, it's just that rawness. And, And I've sang it a few times and people have looked at me when I've gotten to the chorus. And, and said the last line of filthy water and or throw the filthy water out and you get a response and so I think just seeing that response makes it fun to sing um but also it a lot of times it can start up a conversation and I'm mm-hmm. very big about church hurt and um I think that it's it's something that not a lot of people want to talk about or feel like they can talk about. And so I want to make that okay. Um, because I feel like a lot of people have been hurt by a church or by the church, um, maybe growing up or whatever, and it pushed them away from it. And so I want to make that conversation okay to have so that people, I, I think, I hate to say this, but I think Christians have gotten a bad rap over time, and it's because of how we've treated other people. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I just I think that it's something that needs to be talked about and shared that um, we're supposed to be loving towards everyone, and we're supposed to um, encourage people and not condemn and not push away. Amen to that. Um, but we live in a society where people just can't sit down and do nothing. And I say that because yes. it takes energy to hate. And I agree with you that people don't understand Christianity because Christianity has a bad stereotype um, attached to it. Um, yeah. And I like to label everybody like the same, like uh, I'll hear people say, well, the Republicans or the Democrats or the Christians or the Muslims or the, everybody doesn't know every single person. That's number one. Exactly. You can't exactly. group everybody yeah. um, in one category. And just because you're Christian doesn't mean that you don't go out, you don't have fun, you don't do this, you don't do that. Um, I yeah. think people have come to a point where they just don't want to learn. They just don't want to evolve. They just don't want to come to a place of understanding about different, you know, religious modalities or spiritual modality. I mean, I consider myself spiritual. I was raised in the Catholic church, but I don't follow a lot of the things that they believe in anymore. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I believe in the Bible and all that stuff, but I'm also going to be myself. Um, uh, and right. some people just, you know, they're narrow, they have a narrow viewpoint that you have to be a specific way to be Christian or spiritual, believe in God and stuff like that. And, you know, in our world today, you know, there are a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of Christians that believe in a woman's right, you know, for pro-choice and stuff like that. There are. And that's what people don't understand. There's, there's, there's Christians on both sides, pro-life and pro-choice. Okay. And I think that you're right. People have to get a, more, a better understanding of re- what Christianity means to each every d- individual because it's different for each individual. Yeah. It is. Um, and then we have to just respect um, pe- people's views and stuff. Um, there's a lot of things I still don't understand, you know, with all these mass shootings. I don't see the pro-lifers out there protesting and planning stuff and against all these mass shootings. So, so for me, for those that follow that regimen, there's a lot of hypocrisy, you know. Um, it's just, we live, for me, we live in such a sad place right now. And and I tell people oh. all the time that music is our superpower. Because we, we have the ability to take people out of that, that creating music that they can enjoy, that can make them happy. Hell, if they're angry, that they, they can make them lash out, I don't know, in their in their own home, and that, just allow them to feel, basically. We allow people to feel. Music can mu- right. uh, move mountains, music can heal, music can do so many wonderful things. I swear I'm going to get a, a t-shirt that says music is my super, superpower. So I always tell people to continue do their, doing their thing because, you know, we can affect change. So I completely understand. Um, 
Now for you, what um, is your song process like? And if you get writer's block, how do you deal with that? So I will say that every song's kind of kind of different. Um, usually I start with a hook. Um, I think that that's my main thing, and then I kind of build around that hook. But if I get writer's block, Rock This Way is an example of when I got writer's block. Um, okay. And I sort of was like, okay, let me just write a rock song or right. somewhat of a rock song. And so I started looking at all of these different songs, and I thought, if I just throw, like, every big rock song into this thing, like a nod to it, what's that going to look like? Um, so a lot of times, like, I will actually challenge myself in that way. I'll look at some weird word in the dictionary. Um, like, one time I wrote a song about Unparagon um, and wrote a song around that. Um, so I, uh, I I like being challenged in that way. I like people throwing random ideas at me, and that's sort of how I get out of out of writer's block. Because <laughs> which is my mind off of something else because so much of my writing, I do it when I'm either upset or trying to process something or whatever. So if, if I get to that place where I'm just not ready yet to really look at a situation and, and write about it, then I go to just some random situation um, and, and try to pull from that. Yeah, I do the same thing. A lot of my songs are personal because I do a lot of social impact message songs about things going on yeah. in the world and um, things going, that have happened in my life. And I like to write those things because I always think that, you know, that can help somebody else in the world um, when somebody says, okay, this is what I've been through. Um, it's interesting because yeah. sometimes there are days I'm like, I don't know about this music stuff because it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> And, but then I'll get an email or a call and somebody say, oh my gosh, I really love this song and this really helped me. And I'm like, okay, God, okay, universe, <laughs> you're telling me I need yeah. to continue. Because um, it, it, it is hard. Um, it's a lot of work. It's just a lot of work. Mm -mm. A lot of work. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been, and I learned a lot over the, um, I learned that over uh, the pandemic, um, you know, I took a lot of webinars and conferences about music and social media and marketing and promotion and TikTok, this, that. Um, and you just, it's, it's not like it was back in the day. I mean, you could go walk into a DJ radio station, blah, 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 hand your CDO or record over. And then they go, okay, maybe I'll play it. Now it's pay to play. You know, mainstream artists are obviously getting played all the time. It's almost like these people have to die off before, you know, we're able to be heard and seen. And I think that's kind of sad, um, but we have to continue uh, to do everything that we can to get our music out there. Because I think we are important also. We have to keep showing them that we're important, independent artists. Um, I think everybody, I mean, everybody has a story to tell. And, and, and whether, whether you agree with the story or not, you still can learn from it. And I think that's, that that's, that's the cool thing. And that's why I love music. That's why I love meeting people. Um, when I'm out singing and, and stuff because I, I get to meet all these different people and I get to hear their story. And, and I think that there's something to be gleaned from every single person, whether, whether it's how you don't want to be or how you do want to be or whatever the case is, you still can learn from that person. Darn right. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Now I'm going to play your song, A Rock This Way. Tell me what that's about. <laughs> Yeah, so like I said before, it, it was honestly a challenge to myself, and I just wanted to write a fun song where I had all these classic rock songs that I listened to growing up. My mom was huge into, like, um, adult contemporary and classic rock and top 40, and so there were just all these songs that um, little lines just have always stuck out to me, especially, you know, Tom Petty. I love Tom Petty, um, and so... I wanted to write this song that mm. sort of mixed all of these other elements into it and still hopefully made sense. So that's what it's about. Awesome song. Let's play it. Thank you. Look forward and one look back Like a bird free falling in the neon sky We were 
intimate because I think when when it's an intimate setting you can share stories that you may not that may get lost with a bunch of people if that makes sense like I feel like you have more freedom to kind of tell tell the meanings behind songs or tell what a song means to you or just have those conversations um and I I think I'm a conversationalist like as introverted as I am mm. I've gotten to this place where I really want to make that connection with people. And I think it's so much easier to do that in a smaller, in a smaller venue. You're able to actually sit down and talk to somebody. Yeah. I like, I like intimate venues, um, but I love a large venue because I can rock it out on the stage. I love, yeah. you know, you can move around, you can do your thing. It just allows for more. Um, what do you love most about being an artist? I like being able to hopefully inspire somebody else to use their voice. Um, I, I think this world is very good at trying to, like, cause you to stop using your voice. 
um, whether it's by making you feel like you're not enough or your opinion doesn't matter or whatever it is. And so I like being able to encourage somebody else to, to share um, their story. So to me, that, that's the biggest thing is to get past that fear of sharing. And hopefully if, if somebody sees me doing it, then um, they'll feel inspired enough to be able to share their own truth. I love that. I love that. Now, what are three things you wish you had known before you got into the music industry? Hmm. Oh, goodness. Um, (laughs) um, I think number one is that not everybody's bad. Um, I had come from a situation where some of my songs were changed without my permission um, with, with a group of writers. Um, in the church and uh, so because of that I was so fearful to share anything I was so fearful to write with anybody else and uh, I had to go through the process of really of letting that go and realizing that not everyone's like that so I I think number one that I think number two that there's a lot of musicians out there that want to collaborate and and work with other people that it's not like this little silo of people um and and I think the more the more professional musicians are I I see that that being even more true that they want to help out and they want to share and that there's not this scarcity mentality that sometimes exists in smaller places um I think number three is just that you really have to shield yourself against the comparison trap because people, I mean, it's innate, like people are going to compare you to other things. Um, but, and it's even okay. I think to look at what somebody else is doing, but don't look at what somebody else is doing and let that completely derail you and think that what you're doing doesn't matter. Um, don't judge your success by somebody else's and and try to get into their lane so I think the biggest thing is just staying in your lane and realizing that your journey is your journey and uh like that that's been the hardest thing for me is is knowing that my journey is my journey and it doesn't have to look like x y and z um it doesn't have to make sense to everybody else it just it's supposed to look different Um, because it gives you that unique perspective. I mean, it's just, it's it's just crazy. It's just. You you can learn so much. One of the things that I've learned, yeah, is the marketing aspect of things. It's just the promoting is so much different now because there's so many streaming platforms and all that stuff. One of the things I learned during the pandemic was that TikTok is like, and all these social media platforms is that now when you're thinking about writing music, you got to think about how it fits on all these platforms. That's if you have going viral, charting and all that stuff, you want to do all this stuff. That's what comes to mind. That's what should come to people's minds. Yeah. Not just writing a song. Okay, whatever. Because even if you're a social impact message type of artist and you want to be heard or any type of artist that's making a difference, it is important to be on these platforms because you can make a difference on these platforms. People have right. the misconception about TikTok that it's all about jokes and funny and da, 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 and I do some stuff on there. But there are a lot of people that go on there when they're depressed. There are a lot of people that teach you things on TikTok. Yeah. It's not about being funny. You know what I mean? So I think like artists like you and I, we have bigger platforms to be able to express our music and to help other people, which is fantastic. You know, I think yeah. there's um, uh, one last thing is what inspirational quote, passage, message do you like to use to push yourself if you're motivated, if you use one? Um, there's actually two. I would say my, my life first um, is, is actually scripture. It's, um, third, okay. it's Psalm 37, 4. Um, and it's, just you know, uh, well now my mind's blank. <laughs> that happens. But basically, you know, if 
he'll give you the desires of your heart, but you've right. got to trust in him and you've got to, you've got to lean into that. And then um, there's another quote by Christine Kane um, that basically says, you'll never do anything or it takes somebody doing something foolish for God to ever make a difference. And so mm-hmm. I look at that because so many things of what we do in life, won't make sense to other people. It won't even make sense to us sometimes. Um, but we don't know what, we don't know how that can be used to help somebody else. And so that's what I always keep in mind. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for being on Chatting with Nat. I really appreciate you coming on my podcast, my show. I love your voice. I love your music. I can't wait to possibly meet you at the Jersey Music Awards in October. I'm sure it'll be a swinging time. Yeah, that'll be so much fun. All right, everyone. This was singer-songwriter Jennifer Alvarado. Um, she's at www.jenniferalvarado.com. She's on Instagram, Jennifer Alvarado Music. Um, uh, TikTok is the same. YouTube is Gen Music 12. Facebook is Gen Music 12. Reverb Nation is Jennifer Alvarado. Uh, Twitter is Guitar Diva 12. I love that. Uh, SoundCloud is Gem 1984. Um, and if you don't remember that, just Google her. You'll find her. Just Google and buy her music. Yeah, there's a thing called buying. People used to do that. Um, and streaming. Uh, but thank you so much, Jennifer, once again, for being on my show. Until next time on Chatting with Me. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. El juego raspadito Lotería de la Lotería de Maryland está de regreso con todos sus símbolos favoritos justo a tiempo para el año nuevo. Haga coincidir cuatro símbolos en una línea en el tablero del raspadito Lotería y podrá ganar hasta 30 mil dólares al instante. ¿Qué símbolos serán los que te traerán suerte? La corona, la luna, la bota, la rana. Solicite raspaditos de Lotería en la tienda donde compre juegos de la Lotería de Maryland. Por favor, juegue responsablemente. Debe ser mayor de 18 años para jugar. ¡Gané! ¡Lotería! ¡Lotería!